From the box in the corner, we can tell it's probably going to be a right angle worth 90 degrees. If we want to check for sure, one tool we can use to measure it with is a protractor. To measure with a protractor, there's a circle hole in the middle with a line extending out from either side of it. I'm going to line that circle up with my vertex and then line up that black line along my ray. When I do that, we can see that it points to 90 degrees on my other ray. So we know that this is a right angle worth 90 degrees. We can see from the way it's labeled that this is going to be an acute angle. So we know it's less than 90 degrees, but we don't know exactly what it's worth. This is where we can use our protractor to measure it. Again, I'm going to line up the circle at my vertex and use this black line to line up along my bottom ray. When we do that, we can see that our angle points to both 60 degrees and 120 degrees. Well, since we know it's an acute angle, we know it has to be less than 90, so 120 can't be a reasonable answer. So therefore, it must be 60 degrees. The other way we can tell is since I have two arcs of numbers, one on the inside and one on the outside, is by looking at our bottom ray. Our bottom ray pointing off to the right is where we're going to consider to be 0 degrees. The outside arc counts 0, 170. Well, that's not reasonable. The inside arc, on the other hand, counts 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. So I know I would be following the inside values, making this still worth 60 degrees. From the way this angle is measured, we can tell it's an obtuse angle. So we know it's going to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. We can line up our protractor, though, to be more exact. I'm going to line up the circle at the vertex and my bottom ray along there. Now. The first thing I notice is that my ray isn't long enough to reach the numbers. So, since rays can be extended forever in one direction, I can take my protractor, use it as a straight edge, line it up with the ray, and use it to extend longer so it'll cross my protractor. Now, when I line it up, I can see it crosses at both 35 and 145 degrees. Well, since it's an obtuse angle, we know 35 isn't going to be reasonable, so that means it must be 145. Our other way to tell is, again, look at our bottom ray. It's pointing off here to the left, which means I'm going to follow the top arc of numbers as they increase in value, bringing me around to 135 degrees. Looking at this angle, since it's labeled on the outside, we can tell it's a reflex angle. This means it's going to measure between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Unfortunately, when we line up our protractor, we notice we have a small problem in that our protractor only measures up to 180 degrees. In order to measure the reflex angle, we're going to have to instead start by measuring the inside acute angle. Line up your vertex, like always, and along your bottom ray. I can see this angle is either going to be 120 or 60 degrees. Since this is where it points to zero, we're following the outside arc, so this is a 60 degree angle. Now we know this inside angle is worth 60 degrees. Together, my inside angle and my outside angle make a complete circle worth 360 degrees. So to find the measure of my reflex angle, I can take 360 degrees minus the 60 degrees I know on the inside to leave me with 300 degrees for my reflex angle.